Welcome to this Saga Cruises crew safety training video. Always alert. As crew members, you are the eyes and ears of the ship. Your quick response in help raising the alarm can help prevent a minor incident from becoming a fatal tragedy. There are a number of ways in which you can raise the alarm. One way is to use the nearest telephone and dial 997. This will connect you to the bridge, which is manned 24 hours a day. When you call, stay calm and explain who you are, where you are and what is happening. Don't hang up, as you may be asked questions or be given specific instructions by the officer of the watch. Specialist crew will be sent to assist you. If you cannot contact the bridge by phone, use one of the manual call points which are to be used in emergencies where a telephone is not available. To activate it, press firmly with your thumb. This will instantly notify the bridge that there is an incident and where it is. Wait for the arrival of the on-scene team, preferably close to the location you contacted the bridge from, but only if it is safe to stay there. If there is a fire, it is also important to notify people in the immediate area that there is a problem so that they can evacuate. You should do this by loudly shouting, fire, evacuate. As you are shouting, you should then close the fire doors to stop the fire and smoke from spreading. Crew cards. You need to carry your crew card with you at all times. This is because they are required for mustering process in the event of an emergency. Whether you are on duty or off duty, you have to have your crew card with you at all times. Alarm signals. There are two alarm signals which you need to know. Crew alert signal. This first type of alarm signal is the crew alert. The crew alert is a continuous sounding of the ship's warning system and it sounds like this. If you hear the crew alert signal and you are working, you need to turn off and shut down any equipment that you have been using. After you've done that, you should return to your cabin if it is safe to do so. Put on suitable warm clothing, your high-vis vest, hat and life jacket. After that, go straight to your emergency station and perform your emergency duties. General Emergency Signal The second type of alarm is the General Emergency Signal, also known as GES. The General Emergency Signal is seven short blasts followed by one long blast on the ship's warning system. And it sounds like this. The general emergency signal is to tell both passengers and crew that there is an emergency on board and that passengers should be evacuated to their designated muster stations. If you are not already at your emergency station, you should proceed there at once. If you do not have an emergency duty, go directly to your muster station. Crew Muster Once all passengers are mustered, you may be required to go to your muster station. If so, the captain or their deputy will make this announcement. Attention ship's company. Except for containment party and muster station personnel, go to your lifeboat and survival craft muster stations now. Abandoning ship. In the unlikely event of having to abandon ship, the captain will inform the muster station leaders and team leaders by radio. The boat commander and sole counter will tell you when to board your boat or MES. You must follow their instructions. Life jackets. In an emergency, you need to go to your emergency station wearing your life jacket. If for any reason you are unable to return to your cabin to collect your life jacket, Spares are available at muster stations, as well as inside lifeboats, 
five, six, seven, and eight. It is important that you know the correct way to put on your life jacket. It won't work if you wear it incorrectly. To put it on, undo the belt, unclip the buckle, undo the poppers at each side, pull it down onto you so that the red strap goes on your back. Fasten the buckle, pull the strap tight, wrap the strap around you and tuck in what is left. But make sure that the grab strap is free and loose. Escape routes. You need to know how to directly go to your emergency station from either your workplace or your cabin. Only knowing one route isn't enough because that route may not be safe to pass through or it may be blocked entirely. During a fire, smoke and toxic gases kill more people than the fire itself. Breathing even small amounts of smoke can make you drowsy or quickly lose consciousness, regardless of how fit or strong you may be. So, this is why if you encounter smoke, the safest option is to turn around and use your other escape route. But if you have no other choice than to pass through the smoke, you will need to keep as close to the floor as possible and crawl if necessary. The ship has emergency lighting next to the floor to help guide you in the event of an emergency. If there is a fire on board, the captain or their deputy will make an announcement over the ship's public address system. If an emergency escalates and crew members are required to muster, you will need to know how to get from your emergency station to your designated muster station. You will be shown the location of your emergency station and your muster station during your familiarization training. And it is vitally important that you learn the primary and secondary routes for how to get there. Illuminated escape signs show you the primary route from any space. If your workplace ever changes, it is your responsibility to immediately learn the new routes to get you from your emergency station to your muster station. Doors during a fire. In the event of a fire, you need to be careful before opening a door that is closed. Behind a closed door, there could be a fire. Before opening it, look for signs of smoke or paint bubbling caused by extreme heat. If it appears okay, touch the door with the back of your hand to check for heat. If it feels normal, open the door slowly and be prepared to close it again if required. If you suspect that there is a fire on the other side of the door, do not open it and find an alternative route. EEBD There may be an emergency escape breathing device, an EEBD, in your workspace. An EEBD should be used in an emergency if you are trapped or need to pass through a smoke-filled space and is designed to provide you with enough oxygen to escape the space. Instructions for using this equipment will be given to you by the safety officer and are also shown on the device. It is intended for single use only and is not intended to be a replacement for a breathing apparatus set or to be used for firefighting purposes. Fire doors. There are two different types of fire door. The first is a swing type door, which works just like any other type of door. The second is an electric sliding door. If you ever need to open it, push down on the handle and the door will open automatically. It will close again automatically after a short amount of time. Watertight doors. Watertight doors are large steel doors designed to prevent or restrict the flow of water from one compartment to another. Unlike an elevator door, watertight doors will not stop closing if they encounter an obstruction. This means they can seriously injure or even kill you if not used properly. If a watertight door is moving, do not, under any circumstance, attempt to pass through. Unless you have permission from the bridge, 
watertight doors are not to be opened if they are closed because it has safety implications for the whole ship and may result in disciplinary action. The only exception to the rule is in the event of an emergency and there is no other way for you to escape. The safety officer will show you how to operate these doors after this video. Fire extinguisher. On board, we have different types of fire extinguisher. A white band at the top is for dry powder. A gray band is for carbon dioxide, CO2. A green handle with a yellow band is foam. And a green and yellow band is for wet chemical. Make sure you know where your closest fire extinguisher is when you're at work, as well as when you are in your cabin. Tampering with equipment. All safety equipment, including fire and watertight doors, are of paramount importance to the vessel and all those on board. This is why it is a disciplinary offence to interfere with any safety equipment. This includes tying back or obstructing doors. Man overboard. If you see someone fall overboard, you should immediately call out, Man overboard. If you are on your own, find the nearest life buoy, pull it out and throw it towards the person in the water. Immediately after you've done that, telephone 997 to report it to the bridge. If you have somebody with you and you spot someone in the water, call out, Man overboard. Point to where they are, but send the other person to get the life buoy, pull it out and throw it towards them. Until help arrives, keep pointing at the person and keep calling out, Man overboard. If you can find anything else to throw overboard that will float, that will help guide the rescuer's attention to where the casualty is. Once the life buoy is in the water, that person can telephone 997 to report it to the bridge. By pointing at where they are and not taking your eyes off them whilst calling out man overboard, that can save valuable moments in getting help to them. MES and boat deployment. The ship carries eight lifeboats with a capacity of 150 persons each, as well as two marine evacuation systems or MES, each with a capacity for 200. You will be assigned a survival craft and you must learn its location. Dedicated crew will be responsible for the preparation and launching of lifeboats and MES. If needed, each MES has spare rafts with an additional spare capacity of 200 each. If you ever have to abandon ship, you must follow the instructions of the lifeboat or life raft commander. Entering the water. In the event that you are told to enter the water, the procedure for this is Step to the edge. Check it is clear below. Hold your jacket. Cover your nose. Don't jump, but step off and away. Safety culture. Safety is not just about emergencies. Whether you work for the deck, engine or hotel department, you need to remember that safety is everybody's responsibility. Your supervisor is your first point of contact when it comes to safety within your workplace. You are responsible for making sure that you are conducting your day-to-day -day duties in a safe manner. This means wearing the correct personal protective equipment, or PPE for short, and that you obtain the correct permissions before carrying out certain tasks. You also have a responsibility to make sure you are trained in how to use equipment before you do so for the first time. The way that we treat safety is that if you make a genuine mistake, we'll work together to make sure that we learn from it and prevent it from happening in the future. However, if a crew member blatantly disregards procedures or is negligent, there will be consequences. If you are ever unsure or you feel unsafe, 
tell your supervisor or the safety officer. As professional crew members, your quick reaction to emergency situations will help save lives if the situation arises. At all times, stay calm and remember that your own personal safety comes first. Thank you for paying attention and welcome to the Saga family.